Hi there, Hiller here from Old World Home. Welcome back to my channel. I shared a couple months ago a organized house tour and I took you through every room in our house, every closet, and shared with you how we keep our home organized. It's about 1600 feet, including a finished basement. And we are currently a family of five. We have three small children, but I am expecting and do any day now with baby number four. We have no plans to leave this house and we find it to be just the right size for us. So in today's video, I wanna share with you how to really thrive in a small home, whether it is by situation that you're living in a small space or an intentional choice like we have made because there are truly so many benefits to living in a smaller home even if you have children. So like I touched on before, we intentionally chose to live in a smaller home when we were house hunting about four years ago. We had two children at the time and we knew that we were open to having more and yet we still chose a smaller home because smaller home equals smaller bills. Our taxes are cheaper, the home price was cheaper, it's cheaper to heat and cool, it's cheaper when you need to do any maintenance, if you need to replace the roof or siding or anything like that. Everything is a smaller size, so therefore the bills are smaller. And that was definitely something we wanted to keep in mind. We really were looking for a home with property because we found more value in the exterior spaces than necessarily the interior spaces. We had other priorities and other things that we valued, like schooling and savings. Another thing that we intentionally considered when we purchased this house was can this home appreciate? Is the neighborhood sustainable for if we make any renovations on this house, will we see that money back if we were to sell one day? That was definitely something we considered. And also, was there any room to expand the home if we decided to stay long term? Could we go up with it? Could we go out with it? Could we convert a garage? You know, did we have options if we were to stay long term could we make this work as our family grew so those are definitely some things to keep in mind if you're house hunting or even if you're looking to rent a home rent an apartment something like that nothing has to be permanent whatever you are currently living in doesn't have to be where you are forever and as your family grows and changes you can adapt as needed but to max out your budget because you think that that's what you should do i'm here to tell you you do not need to do that more is not more so if by choosing to live in a smaller home frees up more of that budget to save or spend in other ways that you find more valuable i think that's totally the way to go all right so moving on to some practical applications and ways that we really thrive in a smaller home. Personally, like I said, we are going to be a family of six and we have no plans to leave this home. It has everything that we need and yes, our kids are young and as they get older, our needs may change, but in this current season of life, we have done quite a few things to make this home really work for us. The number one thing is simply to be very intentional about what we keep in these four walls, in this home. I have a perpetual donation bin that I am constantly putting things in. I'm constantly making trips to the donation center because as soon as I see that an item is not being used, it's broken, maybe can just be tossed, or it's something my kids have grown out of, I immediately put them in the donation bin and get them out of the house as soon as possible. I don't do any sort of like, monthly or yearly, you know, big purges because I'm constantly doing those minor evaluations. Every time I open a drawer, every time I open a cabinet, go through my kids' toys, do the laundry, as soon as I see that an item is no longer serving us, I get it out. My next tip is baskets. We absolutely love baskets in this house. They hold all sorts of things just in plain sight. So I'm looking here in our living room. That's the main example. We have a whole wall of built-ins that adds so much functional storage for us, but the baskets hide all sorts of art supplies and electrical things, art projects that the kids work on, things for my husband, things for the computer, just all sorts of those random little things that if they were just sitting on those shelves, it would look like a complete disaster. But by putting them all in pretty baskets, 
everything's contained and it's again hidden in plain sight you i know that everything is there but you don't have to see it you can even keep a basket in a high traffic area maybe at the base of your stairs or in your dining room just to collect the random things throughout the day that just clutter up flat surfaces and then at the end of the day you can kind of go through that basket and just put everything back where it belongs and it really helps to keep the house pretty tidy. So similar to baskets is furniture that serves multi-functions or have hidden storage. So furniture like dressers that have drawers that don't necessarily have to be in a bedroom. We have a small chest in our living room that helps us to store kind of those random things versus if it was just a table with legs, I wouldn't have any storage at all. Our coffee table also has two small drawers in it. So we keep coloring books and you know, papers that the kids color. Our bedside tables have drawers. Just try to think about, you know, ways that you can fill up a small space with as much storage as possible. Another way we save space and have for the past eight years, ever since we had our first child, is that we have a booster seat and not a freestanding high chair. And we just put the booster seat on a regular dining chair. And then once they grow out of it, we can put the booster seat away in the basement or store it somewhere somewhere and we don't have any extra furniture that has to take up any floor space. They're also way easier to clean in my opinion and I have never regretted having a booster seat versus the high chair. And along the lines of baby gear, you need so much less than you think you do. When I had my first, I mean, I always was kind of minimal when it came to baby gear. I have really found that I only need kind of one place to put the baby that I can move around the house. So if it's something small and compact, I can have it in our bedroom. I can move it into the kitchen. I can move it into the living room. Wherever I am, if I need somewhere to lay the baby, whether it's a swing or a bassinet or a pack and play or some sort of holding device, I really only need one. Another very practical thing to have that I recently discovered back maybe around Christmas time were wireless earbuds. And I used to have just the corded, the wired ear, you know, headphones, but they would always get snagged on things. So I got the wireless ones and there are so many different brands. It doesn't have to be super expensive. You can get them as cheap as 20, $30 and they are a lifesaver. Sometimes I'll just have one in my ear and I'm just kind of listening to something as I'm doing the things I need to do around the house. And they're especially great when you have a small home, if you have kids that are napping or you just don't want to disturb anybody with what you're listening to, they have been a lifesaver. Another really practical tool or thing to have in the home is WD-40 or some sort of lubricant that can take away squeaks from hinges on doors and cabinets and drawers and things like that. At night, I would notice, you know, if I, if I went to the bathroom or opened the linen closet or whatever, like I was noticing which doors were kind of squeaky and I definitely wanted to eliminate any extra noises at night, especially since we're, you know, expecting a new a baby. We're gonna have a newborn. So I went around with some WD-40 and I greased all of the hinges on the doors in the hallway and our front door was a little bit squeaky, so I did that. Those little minor annoyances or noises, again, especially if you have kids that are napping, if you can eliminate those, it's such an inexpensive little thing to have, takes care of the problem right away. So like I mentioned, we do have a finished basement and we did add a second bathroom to it, which has been such a blessing to our home. But for a long time, for about three years, we only had one bathroom. So having some sort of bathroom spray or something that the members of your family can use or guests that come over, definitely something to keep in the bathroom and have on hand for anyone to use. Just makes that whole situation a little bit nicer. Also in the bathroom or really anywhere that you can fit them, hooks are such a great way to add organization and sort of open storage to your home. So we have hooks on the back of our door, we have hooks in our linen closet, we have hooks in our pantry. Just having the ability to get things up off the floor and utilize the walls or the doors, it is such an inexpensive way to you know, get some more organization and storage. And lastly, lighting. Lighting is such a huge, I'm sure there's some sort of scientific thing behind it. It is such a mood, either lifting or mood depressing 
thing that you have control of in your home. It can just either feel cozy or really stark and uncomfortable. So having lamps versus one overhead light, it just is so much cozier. So something we've done to save space in our small home is add some sconces. So here in our living room, we did add wall sconces to the built-ins and I love turning those on at night. It is so much cozier and warmer than again, just having you know one overhead light. And then in our bedroom, we had small night tables. So instead of having lamps on them that pretty much took up all of the space, we put the lights on the wall and did simple plug-in wall sconces. They aren't hardwired. They just have a little plug that you know, goes down a little wire and they were really easy to install. I found them at Home Depot, so they were not very expensive either. So that's another way to utilize your walls and take up, you know, the flat surfaces less so that you can actually use them and they're available to be used when you need them. So those were my tips for really thriving in a smaller home. I'm sure that there are so many more that I'm not even thinking of. So if you have some tips, leave them down in the comment section below. And again, I will link to that organized house tour so you can really see how we have maximized the space in this house and truly made it a home for our family. If you are new here, be sure to stick around and subscribe and I'll be talking to you soon. Take care.